Well, I'm from Greenville County. I grew up with the cows and chickens and the pigs and all of that. The Thompson family dairy farm at Double Springs. Then I went into the military, 54 to 57. Uh, it was uh, the intelligence branch um, called the CIA. I was in cryptographics. It was meaningless to me. I think it's the military has turned into aggressive war and um, they're not looking for peace. I view humanity much different now. And what does concern you the most about the world today? That it's going to end. To me, art is the greatest method of education. I can't say that the world is going to end tomorrow. I'm saying that conditions are as predicted the most I've ever seen in my life. This um, tells the story of the Pope's uh, permanent crown. The letters that apply from the word on his permanent crown, the Pope, add up to 666. And there's, there's other um, equations that add up to 666 also, not on here, but we're really in the mark of the beast. But it's so obscured today, so I contend this is already fulfilled. The social conditions are not hard to see. I think everybody can see them, but there are so many distractions with television, with terrorism, and all of these things, and we don't seem to think straight. Even as Christians, we don't think straight. And sometimes I don't think straight, but I try every day to refine my thinking to be more godly. And every day I think I know it all and tomorrow I don't know it all. I, I, there's a lot more to learn. Something I didn't know before I did this painting, that the women had no right to vote prior to 1920. But this, this is America. This is who we are. We don't talk about that much. I'm glad that women were given the right to vote, but they still are far behind in having equal privileges with men. I want to say that the Holy Spirit seems to interact with my art. Beware of the police. All these senseless killing of black men by the police. It's terrible, it shouldn't be, it don't have to be. But it's a military mindset that we've taken on, militarizing the police. Not all police are bad, not all police shoot women or young black men, but some do unfortunately, and um, it'll change. Well, I turned Pentecostal at 13 years old and left the Baptist church. I felt led to do it, that's all I know. Besides, she was there. She um, seemed to uh, like me and uh, went along for about three years and then she decided uh, she would take me on. <laughs> Does that sound about right to you? Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> she worked in civil service and her savings put us in business, in the variety store business. We were on Green Avenue for maybe 14 years, then it turned into a silk flower importing business, which we sold nationwide. And we also opened an office in Hong Kong. Well, I, I wanted to be a Walmart. Well, I had um, a nerve disorder. I could blame it on NutraSweet or a bunch of stuff, but it's probably financial stress was getting to me. Uh, we just had everything go against us that you could imagine. An employee stealing. Our suppliers overseas were tending to come here and sell direct. And many things happened. And I completely lost uh, use of my feet for a year's time. And 50% uh, of my hand functions. And I gained a lot of that back, but never did get it back to normal. Oh, the business went bankrupt. It was terrible. Uh, this, is, this is the problem with earthly possessions, you lose them. If you don't lose them, you're separated from them when life is over. And it will be over one way or the other. In the long run, if you're working for money, you're working in vain. If you don't have charity in your heart for people, you're working in vain. So we were closing down in Hong Kong, uh, our interest anyway, and we landed in Hawaii, in Honolulu. And during 
a tour with friends on the island, I was invited to a church service. I guess it was a very stressful time in my life and I, I saw this vision. Where I saw the coming of the Lord and the world on fire and a, a command on my life to paint what I saw and to paint art, period. When the service was over, I asked my host uh, if there was an art supply store on the island. He said, yes, tomorrow I'll loan you a car and you can go there. So I went there and never returned. Never did I suspect that I had the least bit of ability in that, and I, I still don't profess to have. But I understood clearly that I was to paint, even though I'd never painted in my life uh, other than a house or a barn. Never dreamed anything like this would happen to me to paint art, and uh, I didn't want to bring it home, and I didn't want to leave it. He got off the airplane in a wheelchair, and he shows me this. <laughs> What's what's going on now? But um, it's, it's very interesting that painting is. But that was the beginning. You know, in the country, uh, we thought art was extravagant. We didn't that it would be almost sinful to have a an original piece of art in your house, as far as wasteful. So I'm um, self-taught. Uh, the industry calls me self-taught, outsider outside the school of art. They've never studied art. Uh, some professionals say, and don't ever study art because uh, it might interrupt what you're doing. A visionary artist, I guess the main thing is that it's just that a person is, uh, is driven. They have these uh, visions that they have to express. William's painting is uh, what they call a primitive art. There's a lot of energy that goes into it, but it's raw art. It's really uh, a rough look to it. Many times I do not envision how it should look, but I'm usually pleased before I put the brush down. Sometimes because it maybe has pleasing colors, and sometimes because it looks disgusting. I think that it, maybe a big part of it, how uh, primitive it is, is uh, got to do with his nerve uh, condition. His hands shake all the time, so it's really amazing that he can even paint, but uh, he manages. But many times uh, the, I don't recognize my own work because I, I don't feel capable or physically able to do it, but somehow it gets done. I came to help him four years ago and just keep working still. I maintain his uh, websites. Uh, I am taking care of the paintings. He's uh, also a chaplain. He ministers to me every day. Uh, he's been a blessing to help me get out and around and to travel. Also, I am help Mr. Thompson to motivate to do some new paintings. What will be the next painting? So sometimes we do the current, whatever is happening around the world. This is about the uh, chemtrails, chemicals being sprayed in our atmosphere. I call it oil dummy on a string my depiction of George Bush that is being manipulated by oil companies. Uh, this is uh, gluttony gone to seed. Um, I guess sometimes artists have a tendency, or I do anyway, to overemphasize something. Mostly he want to do a lot of biblical painting. I look at this medium of communications as a way to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to the entire world. It is uh, multi-language or bilingual. Uh, characteristics of the paint is a wonderful thing. It reminds me of the creation of God. The paintings grew bigger and bigger and I've, I felt spiritually led to paint the book of Revelation. I call it Revelation Reveal. Each, each line of photos represents uh, 50 feet, so it's in six sections. But I worked on that for three years. When I was painting the 300 foot, I paint on almost every floor. When I got that roll of canvas, it was all 300 feet and one, it weighed several hundred pounds. I couldn't get it upstairs, so I measured it off and cut it into 50 foot sections down there. And I had a, a, a gallon of blue paint and I accidentally kicked it over on an expensive rug. 
thank God the rug was the same color as the blue paint, and I got up as much as I could, but the family never knew, never knew that I spilt the paint. The family didn't much like it, and didn't maybe not at all like it in the beginning, and it was in their way, and uh, they said, get it out of our way, or we're going to put it in the city dump. When the public began to show interest in uh, museums and universities began to show it, then it, it uh, got a lot more respect. Now for a guy who's seen the apocalypse, William is a very friendly fellow, and the mansion's nice too. I think that out of 12 historic sites in Greenville, there's only three left, and this house is on the historic register. The Gassaway family were in banking and hotels and in uh, when the Great Recession hit of 29, and they lost the house. It was used as the first Greenville County Art Museum then, 1960, I believe, to 1974. By 92, they felt like they couldn't keep it up anymore. It was in a state of somewhat disrepair. I was drawn here. We had a house full, and uh, it was hard to hide any longer. It was one of those deals made in heaven. I was praying for a place to put my art that day that I made a wrong turn. But when I stopped at the stop sign, <laughs> I found out why I, I turned that street. I knocked on the door and nobody came to the door and I went to the art school building next door that the county built. The grandson of the founder of the school came to the door and he said the board has voted to sell the mansion. Who do I talk with? It seemed like, you know, I didn't have any money and I was ashamed to offer whatever I had to offer. But my family got involved and made it work, a dollar at a time. When I first met him, he almost immediately invited me to come to see him in South Carolina. And a number of years went by, so I went and then we, we painted our first collaboration together. We, we painted up on the fourth floor. He's got a tower on his house. At some points, we'd both be working on the canvas at the same time, and at other times, he would paint on a little, and then I'd go back in, and I'd do a little more detailing, and then he'd go back on it, and then we'd get more ideas as we were going along. This is called idolatry, the drugging of the nations. It's about religious addiction and the traditions of men. I, I believe, like William, that we're in the end times. But I've believed that, uh, you know, since back in the 80s. There is uh, the predicted Battle of Armageddon that I believe is staged, and that's the way I painted in my 300 foot, all of my Revelation painting, the nuclear destruction of the Earth that is coming. That's what I, I hope my art will minister, an awareness of the conditions we're in and turn people to God rather than to the government for help. The government don't care about the people. Politicians care about their self. That's just a matter of record. I have a favorite. It's in the art school building. It's of a typical house when a mother is knocking on the door and it says, welcome to our home. And the kids are all out with their belongings along the fence. And the meaning, of course, you can figure out, right? Even if you don't know what the message is, you know there's a message. You know he's saying something about something, and then you look to see what he is saying. They're not really welcome if they're homeless. When I finish one, I always say, think and say, this is the last one. But then the, the motivation of the spirit is so strong, it overpowers me, and I go, oh, I gotta paint another one and another one and another one. The inspiration is, is spiritual, that I have to do it because I feel if I don't do it, somebody's gonna be hurting worse than they already are. Art is a universal language, and I use it to illustrate prophecy of the book of Revelation. My art is not about me. It is all about the gospel truth 
and what is coming upon the earth. Mankind has a choice of being saved or being lost. And I hope the decision is for salvation. Only holy hearts will enter heaven as the body and bride of Christ, as heirs to the kingdom.